So I'm going to be telling you about using mathematics to detect gerrymandering. Um, so to start off, I just want to briefly review uh, a basic uh, aspect of our political system in the United States. So we have this body called the House of Representatives. It consists of 438 members. And the way these members are chosen is that they're elected in individual districts, 438 individual districts across the country. So each state gets a number of districts roughly proportional to the population of the state. And there are single winner take all elections in these districts determine the outcome. So the districts, because they have to, uh, because the number of districts depends on the population of the state and the districts have to be roughly equal in population are redrawn every 10 years. So this is one of the reasons why we have the US Census. And because this is how representatives are chosen, there's no mathematical guarantee that the number of representatives from each party in the House will reflect the proportions of votes cast for each party overall in congressional elections. Right? So in particular, the way that this works is not that we look and see if the Democrats won 52% of the vote, then they have to get 52% of the seats. That's not how it works. Right? Instead, we have these individual elections. And in practice, these two things can wildly divert, uh, diverge. So to give you some examples, in 2012 in Pennsylvania, Democrats won a slight majority of the vote, but won only five out of the 18 congressional seats in Pennsylvania. So it was five for the Democrats, 13 for the Republicans, in a state where most of the votes were cast for Democrats. Okay? It's not just in Pennsylvania. The same thing happened in North Carolina. Democrats won a slight majority of votes, but got only four out of the 13 congressional seats in North Carolina. Okay? That same year, if you look in Wisconsin, now this is not at the congressional districts in Wisconsin, but the state legislative districts. So this is the, the state's equivalent of the House of Representatives. So there's 99 of these seats in their state house. Democrats won a majority of votes, quite strongly actually, 53%, but captured a minority of the seats. Okay? So there's, there can be this huge divergence between the fractions of votes cast for each party and the number of seats they win. And just to see that this really has a nationwide impact, in 2012 overall, Democrats won more congressional votes than Republicans, but did not even really come that close to capturing majority of the House. Okay? Now, these examples uh, may give the impression that it's only Republicans gerrymandering states, so that's not quite true. There are states, so Maryland is one, where people think the Democrats are gerrymandering district, uh, districtings. But right now, for various reasons, the general tilt is that there seem to be more districtings biased to Republicans, as you can see in this uh, last statistic. Okay. Now, when you see these results, it's, it's very surprising. And so the question is, so somehow, what's causing this? Where is this coming from? And we said that the way these elections are held is that there are these individual winner-take-all elections in districts. Okay, so somehow what's causing this has to be the districts. Okay, and so this is a map of the, the congressional districts of Pennsylvania that were used for all congressional elections since the 2010 census. Okay, so there's 18 districts in this picture. Uh, by far the most famous is uh, District 7, which is this red district here. So this has been called the Goofy Kicking Donald Duck District. So I'll be goofy. I'm like this. My ears are flying backwards. And I'm very happy to be kicking Donald Duck, OK? And uh, right, so it, it seems kind of ridiculous. Like, how could you possibly end up with a district shape like this? Well, one way you could imagine getting a district, a district shape like this is that, well, I have this part of the state close to Philadelphia that's generally Democrat leaning. Suppose that I wanted to construct a district which would elect a Republican representative. Well, I could find little patches of this area that were barely Republican leaning and paste them together to make one district. And then, of course, I might get something shaped very strangely, and you get something like this. And this is exactly what gerrymandering is. So gerrymandering is carefully drawing district lines to serve some political goal, OK? And, uh, so, and we can see, uh, in, in some cases, it seems like people can do this quite successfully. Um, now, uh, it turns out that Pennsylvania has a new congressional map. So this is, I said this map has been used for every congressional election since 2010, but not anymore. So now, going forward, this is the map that will be used for congressional elections. And this map is in place because of a lawsuit brought by the League of Women Voters uh, against the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So there was a trial heard on an expedited schedule in December. And then uh, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled the map unconstitutional in January. Uh, the Republican legislature ap ap appealed for an emergency stay to the US Supreme Court. And uh, Justice Alito denied their emergency stay uh, in February. And then the legislature didn't meet the deadline set by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to draw a new map. And so the, Pen the Pennsylvania Supreme Court hired an expert to draw this map. And then finally, so one more appeal went to the Supreme Court. The Republican legislature said, please, please let us use this old map at least one more time. And they said, no, you have to use the new map. And that just happened March 19th. So this is really late breaking news. Okay, So we just r very recently have this map. 
So I was an expert in this case, and so one of the things I want to tell you about is what kind of evidence you can bring to a court, how you can use mathematics to show that you can know rigorously that a state is gerrymandered, right? So that you can really meet some, some legal test of, of knowing that there is intent to gerrymander a state. Okay, now what kind of evidence could you imagine bringing to such a case? Um, well, we saw these statistics that were quite striking that with more than 50% of the vote, Democrats got just 5% of the, uh, just got five out of 18 seats. And already, I think when you first hear that, that seems like case closed, obviously, it's gerrymandered. What other explanation could there be, right? So here was this old map, it had this crazy property. You could have a 5-13 split with just 50% of the, with a 50-50 vote split, okay? So at first, this seems convincing in itself, and maybe that should be the whole story, but there's a slight problem with this, okay? So I wanna carry out a thought experiment. Suppose that I decide to start a mathematical collaboration with the zoo, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collaborate with the zoo. They're going to lend me a troop of monkeys, and we're going to work hard to train these monkeys to draw political districting, okay? And we, this is hard work, actually, because they have to draw the correct number of districts, and the districts have to be connected. They have to be roughly equal in population. That would be a really hard one to teach them how to do, okay? But suppose I manage to do that, and at the end, I have these monkeys that can draw districts, okay? And suppose that they drew this map. So this is just some sort of random map, okay? So I, I didn't actually use monkeys to draw this map. No monkeys were harmed in the producing of this presentation. Um, this is, so a computer drew this random like map. But it turns out that this map, okay, it's not as bad as the map we saw before, but with a 50-50 vote split, this is like a, with a 50-50 vote split, this is like a 7-11 seat split. So still the Republicans have a, a surprising advantage with this map even though it was not drawn with intent. So what this shows is that just looking at election results is not enough to, to be confident that somebody tried to make the map unfair, okay? Now, what's another kind of evidence you could try to bring? You could say, well, look at Goofy kicking Donald Duck. I mean, the shapes are ridiculous. What other explanation could there be? And that is a reasonable kind of thing to look at, and uh, the shapes of the districts were discussed in, in this League of Women Voters case, but you have to be a little bit careful about using this as your sole standard. So I'm gonna show you three different maps, so I'm gonna call these uh, so this is the old map, and now here's map A, here's map B, and here's map C. So each of these maps, I mean, I'm not sure really what you should take away from them. None of them look quite as crazy in terms of their shapes as the old map, okay? It turns out that one of these three maps was drawn as a very biased proposed replacement for the old map. It, it, it was almost as gerrymandered as the old map, even though the shapes are much nicer. And the other two were drawn by an algorithm that ignored partisanship and was just trying to do things like minimize county splits. But I would submit that when you just look at these maps and eyeball them, it's hard to tell which is which. Which, is the fair map, which are the fair maps here and which is the unfair map? So it turns out that this first map is the gerrymander and these two are drawn by the simulation, but I'm not sure that you should be able to tell just by looking. So this, this suggests that shape is also alone not really enough to evaluate districtings for bias, okay? So how will we, uh, how will we test for gerrymandering the districting, okay? So our gerrymandering test is going to be very cautious, okay? So we're not going to infer gerrymandering just from election results. We're not going to infer gerrymandering just from the shapes of districts. Instead, we'll only call something gerrymandered if, it, if we can show that it's carefully crafted for partisan bias. If we, so we're going to demonstrate somehow that the map had to be carefully drawn to achieve the partisan bias that it sees. And we're going to do this using two things, randomness and mathematics, okay? And we'll see how these two things come into play. Okay, so first, how do we use randomness to evaluate districtings? So to use randomness, we're going to be making small random changes to districting. So here on the left, you see the legislative district of Wisconsin. So this is this division of Wisconsin, the 99 districts, okay? And we're going to make small random changes to, these, to this districting over and over and over again to produce a sequence of districting. So what does a small random change look like? It looks like this. Does anybody see what's changed? So uh, normally, nobody can see what's changed, but maybe we have so many people, somebody can see what's changed. So that changed right there, right? So I picked, a, I picked a little precinct on the boundary of two districts. I checked that s switching this precinct over wouldn't disconnect a district, wouldn't change the population equality too much, things like that, and then the change is made. It switches from one district to the next, okay? To employ our test, we make random changes like this over and over again to a districting, okay? So here, something like hundreds of changes are being made every second to the districting, okay? When we actually do our analysis, uh, for example, in the Pennsylvania case, or uh, we also submit an amicus brief in the Wisconsin case, we run our analysis for trillions of steps. So to show you a video running at this speed, for the analysis that we actually do for these cases, it would take you a thousand years to watch the video, okay? So this is much slower than it actually runs, okay? 
And what you can see is that we have this districting and it's just sort of being fuzzed up a little bit, right? It's just taking this little, you know, random walk and things are changing a little bit and you're getting districts that are not that different from what you started with, but they're a little different, okay? And what happens when we do this is we see that the dish strings get overwhelmingly fairer than what we started with. Okay, so in particular, I can say when we run this test, we see trillions of dish strings of Wisconsin. Okay, how many of them are as partisan as the one we started with? Okay, so I think that's two ten millionths of the dish strings are as bad as the one we started with. That tiny fraction. So I start with this district in Wisconsin, I make these small changes to it, and I get new dish string, new dish string, new dish string, each just one small step away. And then when I look at this whole sequence, almost all of these are fairer than what I started with, okay? We can do the same analysis with Pennsylvania, okay? So with Pennsylvania, what fraction of maps did I encounter are as bad as what I started with? And it's a similar answer. Here there's actually even more zeros. This answer is four ten billionths of the maps are as bad as what you started with. So you, you start with this map, you start making little random changes, and you find that almost everything you encounter, really almost everything you encounter, is as bad as what you started with. So to put this in the context of the video, I said that to watch the whole video would take you a thousand years. After the first minute of the video, though, you're already, you've already left the space where you see maps as bad as what you started with. So for the rest of those thousand years, everything is fairer than the initial map. Okay? So it's quite striking. Now, when you hear this, again, it's like case closed. This is like a very nice intuitive test for gerrymandering. We just make random changes to it. If the partisanship goes away, this demonstrates the map is gerrymandered. But hold on, we have to be a little bit careful because we had an intuitive test for gerrymandering before. Well, let's just look at the election results. If there's a big divergence between the, the votes cast and the seats won, that seemed like a reasonable test for gerrymandering. And we saw that that had a problem, that on the monkey map, we decided that that monkey map might be gerrymandered according to that test, right? Because there was already a divergence between seats and votes. So do we have the same problem for this test? So far, we've only used randomness. We have this test. It seems like a reasonable test. So is it possible that the monkey map would also fail this test? Because then that's a problem. Then you can't go to the court and say, look, it's failed our test, so we know that they tried to gerrymander the state. Because for all we know, this is just some property of maps in general of Pennsylvania, OK? So what we're asking is, is it possible that if I just take a typical districting of the state, just for example, a random districting, the monkeys drew a districting, is it possible that that districting could just tend naturally to have the property that when I make small random changes to it, it becomes less partisan? Like, is it possible that the Democrats and Republicans are arranged in the state in some strange way that gives our state that property? Is that a property that our state could have? And it turns out the answer is no. It can't have that property. And that's a con consequence of a mathematical theorem that we proved. And, okay, so the precise statement of the mathematical theorem is a, it's a slightly technical, but not so much. So if you're interested in math, I encourage you to look it up. Um, but roughly speaking, what it says is, is that if I start with any typical object, that random changes won't consistently change the, tip, the typical object. So in particular, if I really started with a typical districting of Pennsylvania, it would not happen that when I made random changes to it, it would become consistently less partisan. And this is true not just for gerrymandering, but in a very general setting. So there's, there's a very general setting in which this phenomenon holds, and we can prove that this is the case. So what does this mean quantitatively? It means that when I discuss results like this for Pennsylvania, so before we said for Pennsylvania, at most four ten billionths of the maps that we encountered were as bad as what we started with. Okay? What our theorem does is it lets us quantify how likely that could be to happen just for a typical district of the state. Let's say you know, somebody just pulls a district out of the bag. They're not trying to do anything evil now. They're not trying to gerrymander the state. How likely could it be that you would fail our test this badly? And there's a formula that our theorem gives you. So in particular, for these numbers, it tells you that the chance is at most 300 thousandths that you would be this bad. Okay. So then you can go to the judge and you can say, look, it failed our test. The probability of failing this test, if nothing bad was going on, is just 300 thousandths. And so, I mean, this is a, a crazy level of certainty that you usually can't bring to a courtroom. You even have a mathematical proof asserting that you're bound on the probability of being misled is correct. Okay? And so this is how we combine mathematics and randomness to detect gerrymandering in, in states. Okay. Thank you very much.